Hi, welcome to Once Upon a Farm Storytellers. Our first storyteller is truly a hero of mine. His name is Derek Barnes. Derek Barnes, thank you for joining us. This is the our first Once Upon a Farm Storytellers, which is Once Upon a Farm partnering with The Conscious Kid. And The Conscious Kid is an organization that is a research, policy, and education organization dedicated to equity and promoting positive racial identity development in youth. When we first went down this road, there was no one who exemplifies all of these things more than, than you do, Derek. Um, I'm such a huge fan of your work, as you know. The book that really, as you were just telling me, changed your life, Crown, an Ode to the Fresh Cut, right? Yes. Tell us everything that that, that book won. It won the Ezra Jack Keats Award and won the Ezra Jack Keats Honor for the illustrations, the great illustrations done by Gordon C. James. A gold medal from the Society of Illustrators. It won two Coretta Scott King Honors, won a Caldecott Honor, and won a Newberry Honor. And it won the Kirkus Prize for young readers. So it won pretty much everything. <laughs> it's such a celebratory <coughs> book but it's also just jazz in a book. Music is a big part of my writing style. I get this question all the time. What did I read when I was growing up? And uh, really, there wasn't too much for me to read. You know, when you go into a bookstore, go into a library as a black child, there aren't a lot of books with faces that look like you. So yeah. I read a lot of liner notes. I read liner notes from albums. So I, I used to write down Stevie Wonder lyrics, Earth, Wind, and Fire lyrics, Donnie Hathaway, uh, Roberta Flack. Uh, I was I, I got really big into hip hop music, so I think I think that has contributed to my lyrical kind of writing style. You know what I mean? Oh, so, for sure. Yeah, music, music life. <laughs> what I love and am so grateful for is that you are sharing your new book with us. As the rays go, letters. I am every good thing. I love this book. I love <laughs> yeah. this book. This book, I can mm. hardly read it without, it makes me teary. I love it so much. It, oh, man, thank you. I just love it. It gives me chills. Are you going to read it for us? I am. I, well, I, I'm, I'm going to read as much as I can. I dedicated this book to the memory of Tamir Rice, uh, Trayvon Martin, E.J. Bradford, Jordan Edwards, Michael Brown, Jordan Davis, and Julia Mallory. And Gordon dedicated the, the book to his son, Gabriel, and all little brothers like him. I am a roaring flame of creativity. I am a lightning round of questions and the star-filled sky of solutions. I'm an explorer, planting the flag on every square foot of this planet where I belong. I am a sponge soaking up information, knowledge, and wisdom. I want it all, and I am all it. I am Saturday mornings in the summertime. I'm two bounces in a front flip off the diving board. I am hilarious. I am the life of the party. I am that smile forming on your face right now. I'm the boom, bap, boom, boom, bap. When the bass line thumps and the kick drum jumps, I'm the perfect beat and the perfect rhyme, keeping everything on point and always on time but you already knew that. I'm a grand slam, bass is fully loaded. I'm a nasty two-handed dunk holding on to the rim just to remind you that I'm still the man, believe that. I am the undisputed champion. I am a highlight reel of magnificence. I am the celebration, the applause, and the standing ovation. I am victory. I am a brother a son, a nephew, a favorite cousin, a grandson. I am a friend. I am real. I am tight hugs, a hand to hold, a shoulder to cry on if you have to. I hope you never have to. I am here. That's about as much as I can read. <laughs> One of the most important things is just helping kids have conversations about race. What do you think is the best way for for parents to um, to talk to their kids after reading this book? 
we have four boys and I've been taking them to uh, parks um, ever since they were babies. My oldest boy is 19. And one thing we always notice and when you take your children to the park, children will play with anybody, regardless yeah. of where they come from in the city or what color they are. So I think, it, I, I think it's important that parents teach their children tolerance and to teach them uh, accurate American history but for more, you know, more so on a personal level, teach them the, the, you know, the similarities that you may have, you know, with a stranger. When children are out in public, ask them to uh, come up with three things, that, three positive things that they could assume about a stranger, right? So if they see someone that, that, that um, may not look like their mother, assume that that person could be just as kind as your mother. Or if you see a friend that's your age that maybe he doesn't look like you, assume that maybe he has a great sense of humor. You know, or, and also think about, um, you know, what things that you could have in common. Because a kid comes from another part of town or maybe he doesn't look like you, doesn't mean that he doesn't play Fortnite. Or it doesn't mean that he doesn't have a grandmother that loves him and loves to make him chocolate chip cookies, just like you do. So. We have to start teaching those, um, you know, those similarities that we may have. I, I think that's so important. Tolerance. Tolerance. Yeah. What a gift. Thank you. Thanks for sharing. And acceptance. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I really appreciate it. We're going to get this message out there far and wide. And we're going to get your book out there far and wide. Not that you need our help. You are the first of many storytellers. And who knows? They might be dancers. They might be musicians. But um, to just start our conversations and help moms all over start their conversations. So thank you. Really, yeah. really appreciate it. Thank you, Joe.